The Associated Press has conducted an investigation into the Louisiana State Troopers and they have found that there have been cover ups, brutal police beatings and tapes that have been kept from the public as the state troopers have told the public that the tapes don't even exist. Now this AP review of internal investigative records and newly obtained videos identified at least a dozen cases over the past decade alone in which these Louisiana state troopers or their bosses either ignored or concealed evidence of beatings, they also deflected blame and impeded efforts to root out misconduct. The AP writes that the review that they did coming amid a widening federal investigation into state police misconduct found troopers have made a habit of turning off or muting body cameras during pursuits. When footage is recorded, the agency routinely refuses to release it. So what exactly prompted this investigation in the first place? The Associated Press discloses that the state police have been under intense scrutiny since May when the AP published previously unreleased body cam footage of Ronald Green's May 10th, 2019 arrest at the end of a high speed chase near Monroe. It showed white troopers stunning, beating and dragging Green as he pleaded for mercy. In fact, one clip that a supervisor denied having for two years showed troopers Leaving the heavyset green prone and shackled face down for more than nine minutes. Among the 49 year old's last words, I'm your brother, I'm scared, I'm scared. Now, I want to show you a portion of that video so people can really understand just how brutal this was. I want to give you a warning because it is, in fact, graphic. But with that said, let's take a look. Morning, the video is disturbing. Ronald Green is pleading with Louisiana State Police officers who wrestle him to the ground following a pursuit in May 2019. After excerpts were published by the Associated Press, state police released 40 minutes of body camera videos, which show Green being tased and punched from several angles. Officers say he continued to resist. Green can be heard repeatedly saying, I'm sorry. The FBI is investigating Green's death and what led up to it. But on the tape, trooper Chris Hollingsworth is heard explaining what happened. I beat the ever living out of him, choked him and everything else trying to get him under control. And the was still fighting and we were still wrestling with him trying to hold him down because he was spitting blood everywhere. And then all of a sudden he just went limp. The state troopers initially blamed his death on a car crash. So they lied, obviously. Yeah, to me, um, first of all, uh, credit to Associated Press, great journalism here, uh, uncovering about a dozen cases that were over the top egregious. And in each of those cases, the police hid the evidence for a very long time. So don't tell me about a few bad apples. Uh, this appears to be very standard operating procedure. You beat the hell out of uh, detainees, well, I'm calling them detainees. Now look, it's they're acting like military and, and that's the lingo that's now pervasive. Uh, so you beat the hell out of citizens yeah. and, and then uh, you lie about it brazenly. In the Ronald Green case, we didn't even show you the worst part of the video. After they got him handcuffed and he's bloodied and he's been on the ground for nine minutes, then they start dragging him by his feet. And then they went and filed a report saying, "Oh, he hit a tree and died. And, and the cops all along had the tape. We got the tape recently, but the cops had it the whole time. And the whole time they're backing the other cops that they know for a fact are liars. Because it is part of the system. And and Nina, there's a couple elements here. One is massive police reform across the country. And the second is in the South, honestly, this seems to be almost part of the culture. Like, yeah, of course, the cops are supposed to beat up black people. And by the way, a couple of poor white folks, never rich white folks, but some poor white folks. And then and then we just think it's normal and, and we cover it up. There's definitely a cast and class element uh, to this. And when I use the word cast, I'm black folks. Uh, and, and, and the whole notion of policing in America is really what is the policing relationship, using that term loosely, for the African American community? And what was it designed to do? 
never designed to protect and serve. Because as you can see and hear from the officer's own mouth, they were talking about Mr. Green as if he was not a human being. Yep. And that natural bodily responses were somehow resisting arrest. Your body responds, it is a natural response to continue to move when pain is being inflicted upon you. The indifference that they had to this man's life. And let me tell you something, the governor of that state, the attorney general of that state, all kinds of investigations should be opened. Those officers upon that investigation, cuz I don't wanna just base it on this one video, which to me the video says it all. Not only should they be fired, they should be absolutely charged. So the Department of Justice also needs to get involved in cases like this. And every single officer, administrator that had anything to do with the cover up, they need to go. Yes. This is not policing, this is brutality. That happens time and time again. And you know what, black folks and poor folks, but particularly black folks, we always need a camera to back us up. And right. even though they knew that footage existed because they knew there was not gonna be any consequence, they didn't give a, a damn about lying. Yeah, there are some uh, criminal charges which I'll get to. But first, I wanna go to a retired supervisor who actually oversaw um, a particularly violent clique of troopers. Um, and he told internal investigators uh, this year um, that it was his common practice to rubber stamp officers use of force reports without reviewing without even looking at the body cam footage. Captain John Peters, the regional troop commander recently retired after acknowledging he approved troopers' use of force reports without reviewing their body camera video. Peters told investigators that approving such documents without watching the video was his common practice. Here's his quote, the ultimate responsibility is mine. Records show Peters wrote in an internal email about the approvals last year, I failed, he said. And regarding the criminal charges, um, there are some who are facing criminal charges for their brutality. One former trooper by the name of Jacob Brown uh, was perhaps the agency's most uh, prolifically uh, violent officer in recent years. Records show he tallied 23 uses of force dating to 2015, 19 on black people. And he faces charges in three separate beatings. Video and police records show he beat Aaron Larry Bowman 18 times with a flashlight after deputies pulled him over for a traffic violation in May of 2019. Uh, state police also didn't investigate the attack until 536 days later and only did so after a lawsuit from Bowman, who was left with a broken jaw, ribs and wrist, as well as a gash to his head that required six staples to close. And so to your point about the few rotten apples, Cenk, you see here very clearly that they're, they're like they're covering up, like they're covering up for each other. Uh, their practices in investigating accusations of brutality uh, just makes it clear they're not really investigating at all. Uh, they give the stamp of approval to brutal police beatings without even looking at the body cam footage. Because why even bother? They're gonna cover up for each other anyway. Why bother looking at the footage? Yeah, let me be clear. I don't believe Captain Peters at all. Yeah, he said, "Oh, I never looked at any of those tapes. Well, if that's true, that means you never did your job because your job was to look at those tapes. And that was the core of your job. Well, then we should take his passion away. I agree. Well, you know why Captain Peters is lying? Because they needed someone who was one of them, a good guy they could trust in their gang, their mob. And he would purposely, he would looked at the tapes and he'd bury them. And then he'd retire and go, it was all me, my bad. But it doesn't matter because I'm retired. He should be charged, he, he should have his pension taken away. And then when you say that to cops, they're like, oh, my beloved pension. Well, they're beloved heads that you smashed open because you didn't care at all. And you thought there's gonna be no consequences. That's what gangs do. They cover for each other, they cover up their criminality, etc. Don't get me wrong, there are a few good apples. In there are. Yes. Yeah. Think that there are, but there, you know, let me. There's no consequence. That's why they had this kind of cavalier attitude. And 19 of the 23, for that one example, Anna, that you get, how in the hell did this man get to 23? Yep. How was he able to get, and 19 of the 23 were black? 
There it is. Now, it wouldn't matter to me if they were purple. Wrong is wrong and right is right. But you see the racialized anti black pattern here because black people don't have to be treated with respect at all. The level of indifference and violence. And guess what? There should be felonies for any officer on any level of government that falsifies documents, period. Yep. Yeah, and we need to have accountability for God's sake. Is this our police yes. or is it not our police? Because it, are, or are they hired to be security guards for the rich and and we are considered the enemy, the occupied people of America? Because it certainly feels that way. And there is no question in Louisiana, it is disproportionately impacting African Americans at a massive yeah. rate. And again, there I'm are white taxes, folks who say, by the way, too, Jink. I'm sorry, paying taxes to get beat over the head like this yep. or killed. That's that's exactly right. I mean, these are public servants, and anyone who tries to claim that they're not uh, that they're not supposed to be held accountable by the very people who pay their salaries, they're wrong. They're wrong. These are supposed to be people who keep communities safe, and we've seen over and over again that that is not the case. That they target certain communities uh, based on socioeconomic status and race, and just treat them with extreme brutality and get away with it. So, anyway. They, they keep acting like the cops are above the law. And then they yell at us, you have to respect them. No, number one, you gotta earn that respect. Number two, you gotta earn your paycheck because you actually work for us. And your job isn't supposed to be uh, to brutalize us. It's supposed to protect us. They've That's lost exactly track right. of that completely. And you could tell from the story, the reason we're so mad is this is not a one off. This is systemic. No. They do it on it purpose. Yeah. No arrest should lead to somebody pleading for their life. I mean, that, I mean, can we just all agree with that point right there? Everyone here agrees. Uh, I wish. I the bet rest you a lot of right wing do, do yeah. not agree. Yeah. yeah, and that's why they act the way they do, and it's the right wing that protects them because they don't mind this result. We're outraged by this result, and they think, well, that's kind of what we hired them for. But we all pay their taxes, and this wow. is unacceptable. And we're not going to allow it anymore in America. We're going to stand up for ourselves. And if you don't like yeah. that. Well, that's a sad day for you because we're tired of these beatings and we're tired of these deaths. We are, we need a paradigm shift about what public safety looks like in totality. I mean, public safety is not just policing, it's education, it's jobs, it's infrastructure, it's clean air, clean food, clean water. How about that? What is real? Let's reimagine public safety in the United States of America. This is beyond the pale. There are a lot of great ways to watch the Young Turks, but is there a best way? Of course, the best way is to watch live. Tune in weekdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. You get our uncensored, unapologetic version of the news that you won't get anywhere else. Watch us live.